Lovely. I think we are now on the dot of 10 o'clock and I can see that people are joining us. Uh, we're up to 31. Um, so I would like to welcome you all. Um, brilliant. It, it is so lovely to be here. Um, the government, uh, sorry, today we're obviously covering the, the Kickstart scheme. Um, the government announced the Kickstart scheme back in July. Um, I've been told that a scheme of this scope usually takes 18 to 24 months to implement. So we're four months in and, and, and it is beginning to work. Um, BBC News said this morning, um, at the present 19,000 young people are in work placements, which is good to hear. Um, in a nutshell, the Kickstart scheme provides funding to employers to create new six month job placements for young people who are currently on universal credit and at risk of long term unemployment. This is part of the government's plan for jobs and aims to create hundreds and thousands of new fully funded jobs across England, Scotland and Wales. Um, sadly, young people have been among the worst affected by rising unemployment due to COVID-19. The rate among young people is far higher than the overall rate of 4.8%. It is reaching 14.6%. The scheme is very much work in progress and the Hounslow Chamber is, is applying to be an intermediary, um, hence why you know, we're holding this webinar this morning. And we're so pleased that Nigel Yates, Kickstart Coordination Team Leader, London and Essex Group Office is able to be with us. Nigel, are you able to um, switch on your camera? Hello. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm here to frighten everybody. By, uh, and, and, <laughs> Brilliant. Can, yes. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you, Sally. Thank you for the invitation to join you today. Um, yes, fantastic introduction. Thank you very much. Um, the Kickstart scheme, uh, as Sally said, is part of the uh, Chancellor's plan for jobs uh, in response to the issues arranged by the, uh, uh, sorry, uh, of, the, of, the, of the pandemic. Um, uh, 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 yeah, thank you for preambling the fact that it normally takes about 18 months to get one of these schemes up and running. Uh, I think we're uh, I think we're on the Thursday morning of, uh, of I think week 14 of this one. And yes, absolutely, people started taking up placements uh, across the country um, in the last week of October, uh, and um, we have many, many, many thousands of placements uh, coming into the scheme uh, literally every day. Um, the, uh, the scheme has been um, really well received um, and, uh, and we are uh, devoting a lot of time and energy in terms of resources to, you know, in terms of um, uh, dealing with applications uh, and dealing with many, many questions about it. So delighted to have the chance to, to, uh, to talk to Hanslow Chamber this morning. Um, if it's okay, I'm going to share my screen with a, with a few PowerPoint slides, if that's okay. I, I promise it won't be too much uh, death by PowerPoint, but... Uh, uh, we'll try to uh, we'll, we'll, we'll try to give you some information uh, uh, on this uh, as we go. So uh, let me just find the slides here. You should have some slides up on the screen now. I hope. Um, uh, yes, excellent. The thumbs up is great. So yes, as we say, the the, the Kickstart scheme is a is a job creation scheme. Uh, that's important. These are jobs, uh, and you'll find me emphasising that a couple of times as we go through this. Um, uh, short discussion uh, because uh, this is a scheme a little unlike ones that we've run previously. Some of you will have, have no doubt dealt with uh, uh, previous schemes of ours, things like the Future Jobs Fund. Uh, this is a little different and these are jobs. Uh, they're designed for candidates in the age range of uh, 16 to 24. All of our previous experiences with, uh, with recessions and downturns show that it's this age group that takes the longest to recover from, uh, um, from, a, from a downturn in terms of long-term job prospects. Um, so uh, specifically, uh, this, uh, this scheme is targeted at those who are aged 16 to 24. As Sally has said, it's entirely funded by the UK government uh, and is open uh, across uh, uh, England, Scotland and Wales. We, and the scheme is open for applications uh, up until December 2021. Um, that seems like a long way away, perhaps, at the moment, but the reason I'm making this point is, um, I have to be honest, occasionally government has a, has a bit of a reputation for announcing a scheme, saying it's going to be wonderful, and then withdrawing the funding after 15 minutes. Uh, that's not the plan with the scheme. It's uh, the money's in place to support um, the programme up until, uh, in terms of applications, up until December 2021. 
uh, and that would mean that potentially there are kickstart placements in your businesses uh, up until perhaps as late as June 2022. So this is a long-term scheme um, uh, with, some, uh, with some serious job goals. Uh, the intention, I think, uh, is, is upwards of uh, 250,000 placements uh, during, the, uh, during the lifetime of the scheme. Um, the way that it works is actually relatively straightforward. Uh, as employers, we're asking you to come forward and offer job placements for the scheme. Uh, they will be uh, jobs in your businesses. Uh, there'll be new jobs. We'll, we'll talk a little bit about that in a moment. Um, and in, in response uh, to you offering us uh, job placements, we will offer you candidates. Uh, there are some eligibility rules around these candidates. First of all, that they must be currently claiming universal credit. Uh, each of the candidates must be broadly job ready um, and at risk of long term unemployment. What that means is that we're probably not going to be offering candidates to you who uh, are further, either further away from the labour market or potentially have uh, additional barriers that need, the, uh, need addressing before they would, uh, are ready for the job market. But in essence, these are people who are probably would never, had it not been for the pandemic, we would never even have encountered. Um, so these are people who would, in all normal circumstances, almost certainly have, have, have gained jobs for themselves in the period March to now. Um, uh, perhaps in some of those industries that have been more seriously affected by uh, uh, by the pandemic. Um, you know, certainly talking to Hanslow Borough, you will be aware of the issues around the aviation, aviation industries and the, and the leisure sector and the hospitality sectors um, and some of the retail sectors. Uh, so uh, these are probably young people who in, uh, in all other walks of life would have found work uh, without uh, needing to engage with the job centre. And uh, in that case, I'll probably, as I say, broadly job ready, motivated uh, and, uh, and keen to work. Uh, the final point about uh, this in terms of application selling. If you're, you're yes, I just wanted to, to, to jump in there because I'm getting an awful lot of questions about where these people have to come from, these young people. And I think you, we need to stress the point they come via Job Centre Plus. Because well, I, I've actually had some young people calling me at the office saying they want to get onto the scheme, and, and basically I'm just telling them go, you know, go go register with Job Centre mm -hmm. Plus. So there's a few questions in, in in the in the question and answer about that. So the, so the young people come via the Job Centre. Absolutely, and that's the point of my last uh, little uh, bullet on that uh, on that on that section there, is. Uh, for a, an employer of any form to attract the funding for this, the candidates that you employ must be referred by the job centre. Uh, there's some background uh, IT involved in this. Uh, that's a combination between uh, the DWP's universal credit system and uh, HMRC's PAYE system um, that uh, they have to talk to each other to make the, uh, make the funding flow. Um, so uh, if, you, if, if you're looking for a candidate who's not referred by Job Centre Plus, then I'm afraid you will not attract any funding uh, for your placement. Um, finally, on this slide, just the point there, th these are jobs. Uh, they're jobs in your businesses. Uh, they are people, they are claimants who will turn into candidates, who will turn into employees, your employees. They'll be on your terms and conditions, they'll be in your premises, or whatever it is you're having people work from, they'll be on your payroll. They will be your employees. You will have chosen them. We will not. We will not select people for you. We're not forcing anybody into the scheme. These are not training roles. They're not free jobs on work trials. These are jobs in your businesses. These are not training jobs. These are not training roles. Um, so that's broadly the, way, the, the 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 nuts and bolts of the scheme. Let's, uh, let's perhaps just talk a little bit more um, uh, about uh, what we're expecting uh, from you as employers to offer to the scheme. First of all, these have to be newly created jobs. Um, and in essence, what that means is, is they cannot be jobs that you already have planned or have previously advertised. They cannot be replacing existing job roles that you have in your business. Uh, so you can't, uh, you can't lose an employee and then replace them with a government funded one. Uh, and they're also intended not to, re to reduce anybody's hours. So if you have uh, people uh, in your business are, uh, or, or perhaps contractors working for your business, uh, the intention is 
is not to re re replace jobs. This, as I said earlier on, is a job creation scheme. Uh, the jobs have to be meaningful. Um, so in that respect, I guess the best way to is they have to be proper jobs. Um, uh, if uh, you're expecting someone to come into your business to, uh, to sweep, the, sweep the yard for five hours a day, five days a week without ever speaking to anybody, that's probably not going to be viewed as a meaningful job. Um, so these are jo meaningful jobs, proper jobs for a minimum of 25 hours per week for a, uh, a continuous period of six consecutive months. And clearly we're expecting employers to provide a safe uh, and legal employment environment um, uh, for, for these candidates to come into. Um, we're asking you to give us a commitment that you will pay the candidates as a minimum the prevailing national minimum wage. Uh, uh, depending on their age, which uh, where, where the rates change. Um, if you wish to pay them more, that's absolutely fine. We have many employers in the scheme uh, who are looking to pay them at a different rate, um, but the funding you will get from the government covers only national minimum wage. Uh, so anything uh, anything over that rate, uh, is, you, you will be funding yourselves. And indeed, if you want to have somebody in your business for more than the 25 hours, uh, that we're paying for, that's also fine. So perhaps you want somebody there full time, that might be 35 hours in your business. That's absolutely fine. You can employ them on that basis, but you will be picking up the tab for that, um, for that, for that additional 10 hours in that circumstance. The final thing we're asking you to do is to provide the candidates with a wraparound support package uh, that builds on the candidate's skills and improves their long-term job prospects. The point of this is, is that, um, in a perfect world, um, uh, you would have Fred come into your business and at the end of six months, you would decide that uh, you can no longer do without Fred and you'd offer him a full-time job. That would be brilliant. Uh, but we understand that won't be the case in every situation. And we understand that at the end of some of these six months work placements, uh, people will be coming back to us. But we, we're, gonna, we're giving you broadly job-ready candidates and we want you to give us back fully job-ready candidates. Uh, in that respect, um, we would hope that you would assist them with making sure that their CVs are completely up to date. We would hope that you would assist them being able to demonstrate the skills and the benefits they've had from working in your business for the last uh, six months. We'd hope you'd assist them perhaps in doing some interview practice. That might be a, a, a helpful thing to do. Um, we hope that perhaps maybe in the in the uh, in the final few days of. Uh, uh, of their time with you that perhaps you might afford them some time to do some job search. So uh, we're, going, we're asking for, some, for your help and assistance uh, with uh, this wraparound support. It is a requirement of the scheme. You'll be asked um, to identify what it is you're going to do as part of the application process. Uh, and it is absolutely essential that, um, uh, that, that, that you're, you're able and willing to, uh, to provide uh, that support. Um, so let's have a little look about uh, what we're offering you in terms of uh, offering a job placement. As I've said, the government will fund uh, 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 25 hours per week at the relevant and prevailing national minimum wage rate for that candidate, um, uh, their wages. Uh, that will include any associated national insurance contributions that the employer has to make, and uh, in the event that uh, the candidate attracts uh, any minimum automatic enrollment pension contributions, we'll cover that too. In addition to that, you will be offered a £1,500, I'm calling it a startup grant, uh, but it's a payment of £1,500 um, that is aimed to do two things. Firstly, it aims to support uh, onboarding costs within your business, because again, we understand that might be the case. If it's a brand new job, you might need to buy a new laptop or you may need to buy some new machinery or a uniform or whatever it may be to onboard a new candidate into your business. Um, so uh, it's, it's designed to cover those costs. And again, we also understand that not every business will be comfortable with, uh, with delivering the wraparound support elements uh, and that you may look to, uh, to uh, your associations or partners um, uh, to, uh, to provide some of that. Uh, I'm sure Sally will talk a little bit about what Hanslow Chamber are going to do in that respect That's, uh, later on. But uh, we understand that there may be a cost associated to that. So again, this £1,500 recognises uh, that you may need to buy in some of those services uh, and, uh, and is, is there to assist in that particular respect. 
On top of that, you will also have uh, ongoing candidate support from, uh, from my colleagues in job centres. Uh, my colleagues in job centres are called work coaches. They're the people who have, um, uh, have day-to-day -day contact with, uh, with claimants uh, and will actually be uh, referring uh, claimants to you as well. Um, so we will be offering the claimant uh, the, the opportunity to stay in contact with us, to, uh, to have support from their work coach. I have to tell you that under law, the claimant doesn't, isn't required to, uh, to, to accept that, uh, that offer, but uh, that offer of support will be there for, for, the, for, the, uh, for the claimant throughout the entire period of their placement. Um, uh, and there may be other things that we can do to support employers um, uh, uh, around some of these uh, placements as well. Uh, as we're going on, but they will be local relationships that uh, uh, that we may be able to build with employers offering jobs into the scheme. Um, so let me just talk a little bit about uh, the process. Uh, for employers offering fewer than 30 job placements to the scheme, those applications must be made via a gateway organisation. Um, uh, again, I have to tell you that I'm absolutely brief to uh, to be as impartial as I absolutely can be where gate choice of gateway organisations are concerned, but, uh, but I'm delighted to know that Hounslow Chamber uh, uh, are offering that facility and, uh, um, uh, and uh, I'm, I'm sure you all have fantastic relationships there, so um, uh, maybe they might be an obvious choice. Um, those gateway organisations um, will bring together uh, effectively consortiums of employers to meet that minimum number of 30 in terms of uh, the, 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 the threshold of our applications. Um, the gateway organisations will need to, uh, to, to provide some basic details uh, for each employer uh, who's offering jobs into the scheme. Uh, and these are the kind of things that, uh, that, um, that the gateways will need to understand from each of you. So they'll need your company's house reference number or a charity condition number if you uh, uh, if, if that's your uh, if that's your business obviously along with your uh, address details uh, they'll need some overview details of what your recruitment has been in the, in the in the previous six months and what current recruitment you have doing and what changes that have been to your workforce in the past six months uh, they'll need basic details of the job placement uh, at this stage it's uh, it's an overview but also uh, an, an understanding of the location of where those jobs will be. Uh, and again, uh, an overview of how you will uh, intend to provide the wraparound support package that I mentioned a moment ago. Uh, so uh, when you're thinking about adding jobs to the scheme, please think about uh, collating all of that information because I'm sure that will help Sally uh, when she makes her bid. Um, in terms of um, how long it takes, all of these applications are made online, uh, and if you're going through the gateway organisation, they will uh, they will do all of that administration on your behalf. Uh, currently, the assessment and approval process uh, is taking around about a month. I would anticipate that will speed up, um, but we're right at the start of the scheme, and we have many, many thousands of applications. And at the moment, it is taking a full calendar month for those uh, applications to be um, uh, assessed. Uh, and go through the approval process. So again, you may want to, fit, uh, to factor that in uh, to your plans in terms of when you're anticipating having job starts and things of that nature. Once your application has been approved, you will be asked for a lot more detail about each individual job uh, that's being offered to the scheme. Uh, so you'll be, offered, you'll be asked for some, uh, some of the, I guess, more obvious things, a, a job description and exact location um, and that's driven by postcode. I might come back to that in a second. Uh, a start date, uh, or at least an ideal start date. The number of hours you're doing, if it's not, if, if it's the 25, or perhaps it might be more. Uh, the exact pay rate you're making, uh, the full details of the wraparound support package you're, uh, you're offering, um, and the application process that you want to employ to, uh, to, to field uh, and assess your own candidates as they come to you. Um, you'll also be asked how many people you're prepared to interview uh, for each job placement. So uh, in that, we take all of that detail and we upload that onto our universal credit system. Uh, and what that then does is it cascades using postcode data um, that those individual job opportunities to the job centre closest to the postcode uh, that you've given us as the location of the job. 
it will also uh, uh, cascade it to the, all of the, all of the uh, job centres surrounding that postcode as well. We call this a travel to work area. Uh, under law, it's actually 90 minutes, but we try, we kind of try to take a practical approach to this. Um, so if you have a uh, uh, if if you have a job on offer in TW3, it'll absolutely go to Hanslow Job Centre, but it will almost certainly go to um, uh, uh, Hayes and uh, Uxbridge and uh, Acton and Ealing and uh, uh, and Twickenham and Staines. Uh, in terms of the in terms of the catchment area for candidates as well, um, the work coach at this point is the only person who can see that. Uh, well, I guess you could call it a job advert. Um, so the work coach sees it. Uh, as I mentioned earlier on, these are people who work with candidates every day, claimants every day of the week. Uh, they understand their job goals. They understand how close to the job market they are. They understand what their motivations are. Uh, so the work coach will identify suitable candidates for each job role, and then they will discuss those job roles with the candidates that they've identified. Uh, and if they agree that it's the right thing for the candidate then to, uh, to make an application to you, uh, the work coach sends all of those details to the claimant, uh, and it is the claimant's responsibility then to make the application uh, via the means that you've identified to us. The reason for doing it like this is we're trying to uh, replicate here um, as real a um, uh, process of, of applying for a job as possible. And also, frankly, these are people who are going to be in your business, so we feel it's right for you as employers to have the, the correct choice of candidates. So it's the candidate's responsibility, the claimant's responsibility to make themselves a candidate to you by making an application. You will then do your normal recruitment process. Perhaps you'll do a online perhaps you'll do a video interview you might even want to do a face-to-face -face interview perhaps an online test whatever it is you will want to do as your application process you will follow that follow that um, with the shortlist you that you draw up from the candidates that have made an application to you uh, and then you will choose the best candidate to come into your business uh, and you'll make us and you'll make them a job offer uh, and when you make them a job offer, they'll let us know. Uh, we will press a button back at, at the job centre uh, to say that, uh, that that's going to happen. And the candidate comes into your business uh, and works for you for six months. Um, and that's broadly the way the, the, the system works. In terms of when payments are made, uh, the payment of the £1,500, uh, what I've called a startup grant, is made broadly speaking at the end of the first week of employment there was a tiny caveat in this uh, and that caveat is is that you need to put your candidate uh, and your new employee onto your payroll um, and give them their paye reference uh, on day one for that to happen because in, in practice this is a, it, this 1500 pound payment will come through in about seven calendar days once they're on your payroll now again um, I've done many of these uh, talks uh, over the last month or two uh, and I've spoken to many, many employers and I know lots of employers perhaps don't put people on their payroll until just before the payroll runs. Uh, if you want to attract this £1,500 payment as quickly as possible, please put uh, your new employee on your payroll ASAP. Um, the first wage support payment is made approximately six weeks after the candidate becomes your employee and, uh, uh, and begins employment. Why six weeks? Uh, well, again, we know some employers pay weekly and run their payroll weekly, some fortnightly. I've even come across one or two who pay three weekly, which is an unusual one. Uh, but certainly monthly as well is, a, is, is the most regular one. So we think that six weeks allows us to guarantee that anybody who's come onto the scheme will have gone through one payroll run once. Uh, and uh, again, as I mentioned earlier on, the back office systems are this uh, universal credit system talking to PAYE. Um, so we'll be able to see whether or not somebody has been paid for their first, uh, during their first month of employment. And on that basis, we'll release, release the wage support uh, funding at that point. And then that will um, that process will repeat monthly thereafter. Uh, as I mentioned, Job Centre Plus work coaches will continue to offer support to candidates throughout their employment with you. Uh, 
we fully understand that not every candidate will stay for the full, full six months and that may be because uh, it's not the right fit for them or it may not be the right fit for you uh, or perhaps they find a full-time permanent job or whatever it may be. Um, once they're in your business, they're subject to your normal terms and conditions. So frankly, if they do something that would cause you to dismiss a normal employee, you're entitled to do that and you would then be entitled to take on another candidate through the scheme. Um, so uh, we will attempt to stay in touch with candidates all the way through the pro their, their, their placement review um, so that we can offer them that support. Uh, and like I said, we may be able to put other things in place to offer support to employers as well. And frankly, the candidate then does the job for six months uh, and, we'll, I, and we'll hope and pray that at the end of that six months you'll want to keep them into the scheme or maybe move them on uh, if, you, if, if you're a business of the size that perhaps attracts uh, uh, apprenticeship levy uh, payments, maybe you'll want to move them on to an apprenticeship scheme. Who knows? Um, but if, they, if that's not the case, then as I said, then I'll ask you to send them back to us uh, as job ready as they can and ready to, uh, to start their next job search um, uh, uh, and, uh, as they go forward in their careers. Uh, and, uh, and really, that's it. That's the scheme in a nutshell. So uh, I'm going to stop sharing my screen now, uh, and um, uh, Sally would be very happy to, uh, to take any questions Brilliant. Uh, either you have or anybody else has. Thank you very much indeed, Nigel, for that. It would be lovely if we could have a copy of those slides. Is that possible? Uh, I think you have it. Oh, of course I do. You're so right. And I'll get those out to people. Thank you for that reminder. Um, right. We've had quite a lot of questions. Um, I'm just going to give a brief rundown where Hounslow Chamber is because people are asking about that. So Hounslow Chamber has applied to be an intermediary. Um, we sent our first batch of 38 jobs from 15 companies back on the 9th of October. Um, we are learning on our feet, as everybody is. So the first mistake that, that, yeah, the first thing went a little awry was they asked for the company address. Actually, they want the, the company's registered address. So, so we made those amendments. Uh, the next amendments they asked for, lots of people sort of said one to two placements or, you know, one to five. So we put those numbers in. Um, no, they want definite numbers. So we just went for the lower, the lowest one. So if you say one to two, we say you're going to offer one placement. So, so that was amended. Um, so we wait to hear for the first batch. Our second tranche was sent off on the 27th of October. Um, we've received acknowledgements for both of them, but have heard nothing back from the 27th of October as yet. Um, and that was 33 jobs from 12 companies. Our third tranche, we're up to 20 um, work placements. We've just got 10 to go. And as I say, we, we're, Lisa and I were getting more streamlined. We know what information we're, we're, we're needing to, to give to people. So, so that's a, 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 the where Hounslow Chamber is. And ha as I understand it, with each tranche, with each application, we, we are we're assessed each time round. So for tranche one, hopefully we're accepted as a gateway and hopefully for tranche two will be accepted as a gateway. We're not automatically a gateway because we've had one tranche accepted. It, it's that they're, they're all, does it work like that, Nigel? Well, you, you are a gateway. Full, okay. full stop. You're you're on, you're on the listing. Uh, you're you're approved as a gateway company. But what they so so what they won't do is they won't reassess Hounslow Chamber every single time. Well, unless Hounslow Chamber yourselves are offering jobs into the scheme, they won't. But but, but if you're just acting as the gateway, they won't reassess you each time okay. because you've been all, already accepted. But they will do that company's house search yeah. on on every. Um, on every bit, uh, every company that's part of each bid. So, so yeah, there is a there is a process each time. That would be correct. Brilliant. Um, and that leads on to a question because I think the the job portal at the job centre is all to do with the postcode. Mm -hmm. But the postcode they've asked for is for the registered office of the company. Mm -hmm. Now, sometimes you know, often companies use their solicitors or accountants. They're not their work address. So, how how does that work, Nigel? So once you get your bid approved. Uh, uh, so let's 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 take the positives that all these bids are going to be approved. Uh, so once you get this, your bid approved, uh, then you will be sent for each job uh, that's in the scheme. And you're absolutely right; uh, a, a range of jobs won't work. They will ask you to give a definite number. Um, so once you once you do that, you'll be sent. Uh, and I think it's actually, I, I, I think it's a pretty low tech uh, Microsoft Word file, to be brutally honest. But you'll be sent a a, a, a file for each scheme. Uh, for, for each job in the scheme to uh, 
uh, to detail, in some detail, things like job description, all that kind of stuff. And in there, it asks you for the postcode location of the job. Oh, brilliant. Um, now, one or two people have said to us, but we're, we're, we're thinking some of these roles might be remotely located or working from home or, or whatever that might be. A couple of, couple of tips on that. Um, it, it, there's nothing wrong with having remote jobs into the scheme, but you will need to identify how you're going to support. As an employer, you'll need to identify how you're going to support um, uh, somebody who's, who's remotely located to make sure that they're, they're not remote and that they do get the full experience of actually being, working in a job. And secondly, um, how, how do you give a postcode if somebody's working from home? My advice on that would be just to give the postcode of the location of the business, uh, because as I said, that will then um, be aligned to the, to, the, to, to the job center closest to that and all of those job centers around it. Brilliant, thank you. Uh, Alan, you wanted to say something. Um, yes, one of the questions we've been asked is, is there an amount of time somebody has to be on universal credit before they can qualify to be proposed within the Kickstart scheme? Uh, the short answer is no. There's a slightly longer answer, um, but no. So, so, so long as their UC account, uh, sorry, job center, job center uh, plague. Then I've, I've 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 shortened it. Uh, yeah, the universal credit UC. Yeah. Uh, so long as their UC account is up and active, um, then anybody's entitled to it. The 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 criteria is though that is that someone is at risk of long term unemployment. Now, the, the strict definition of long-term unemployment uh, is unemployed for six months or longer. So uh, does that mean you have to have been on UC for six months? No. Um, but so uh, the example I, I give of this is, uh, if you had a job start that you were planning to start on the 24th of March, but obviously we locked down on the 23rd of March, um, uh, the, the possibility is, is you've not worked since then. You may not have claimed UC, um, until maybe one, two, three months ago, whenever that might have been, because of whatever circumstances uh, that existed in your household. Um, so uh, you might only, in that, in that particular set of circumstances, you might only have been claiming UC for two or three months. But actually, demonstrably, because you haven't worked since March, you're at, you're at risk of long-term unemployment. So like I said, the short answer is no. There is a, the, there's a slightly longer answer in terms of is the candidate genuinely at risk of being long-term unemployed? Okay, good to hear. One of the people had done, uh, made a statement that you had to be on universal credit for 13 weeks, um, no. but we'll be able to go back and correct that. So that's really good to hear. Thank you. No, the eligibility is active, active UC claim um, and, uh, uh, and, and at risk of long-term unemployment. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, one another question is what level or caliber of, of job should be advertised? Um, Hounslow Chamber, we've we've seen the whole range from sort of a you know a, a barista, um, coffee coffee shop worker, you know, up, up to sort of a, a social media manager. What 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 are your thoughts on this? Um, uh, in essence, what we're looking for here, I, I, I think. There's, there's two things, aren't there? Firstly, we're, we're offering wage support at national minimum wage level. Um, so uh, unless the business is, uh, so I think the average, the average going rate for a, for, a, for a social media manager is around £35,000 a year. Um, uh, so unless, unless the business is looking to employ somebody is going to make up that difference between uh, eight pounds or something an hour and uh, thirty-five thousand pounds a year. Yeah. Then, uh, th then I think that kind of answers its own question. Yeah. That said, um, what what we're looking, for, we're, I think, we kind of understand that these are likely to be entry-level roles, um, uh, and um, and we're also not wanting roles that take a massive amount of training uh, in able to do the job in the first place. So if you have a job that takes um, five months and three weeks to train somebody in, um, it's probably unlikely to get accepted onto the scheme because they won't actually do the job for any more than a week. Um, so, but just that, I mean, that social media role is an interesting one, Sally, that you bring up, because there is a very big talent pool of people out there uh, 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 in this age range that have skills in that area. Um, so, uh, 
as an employer, you might want to think about how you title the job, what the expectations of the job role are, because there will be, because I see them every day, there will be candidates out there who have the skills to be able to do some of that kind of job role. Um, so I think the, uh, the, the, the skill here is in, is in how you write the job description and in how you um, catch your terms in terms of what kind of level of experience you're looking at. But again, um, ladies and gentlemen, I would just remind you, these jobs are aimed at 16 to 24 year olds, and I'm absolutely sure there's some 24 or even 20 year old social media managers out there, but there won't be a lot of them. Um, so, uh, so, so, so I think a, a reasonableness approach needs to be needs to be taken to that. Okay, thank you. And, and that brings on somebody's asked: Is there a, a job description template, or is that up to each employer? Uh, the answer is no. There isn't one. Um, I can uh, no. Is the short answer. I can <laughs> I, 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 I can perhaps share something, Sally, with you that you might want to share with your members. Yeah. That, uh, that gives a, a bit of a, a, a bit of a, a, an idea, but again, if you were posting this job up on uh, um, on Indeed or any of the job boards that are available, the kind of job description you're going to put onto that is exactly the same kind of yeah. job description that we do. Lovely, thank you for that. Um, right, I've got a rather specific one. Um, <laughs> a single mother under mm -hmm. the, you know, under the age of twenty four on universal credit. Mm -hmm. um, she gets rent and child benefit paid. Mm -hmm. How would this scheme impact her financially? Okay, so the way universal credit works, uh, they, in, in, in this, the scheme itself doesn't impact her at all in that, in financially, uh, because universal credit works the way that universal credit works. Uh, in that, uh, broadly, the way universal credit works is the more you earn, the less the less benefit you get, uh, and, and and that's the reason why. Uh, I laboured the point about people need to be put under the PAYE scheme because that's how universal credit works out the payments because uh, it looks at what somebody's been paid uh, through PAYE and then uh, it balances the universal credit thing out in the first place. In addition to that, there's a thing called UC Taper, um, which over the, uh, over the beginning part of somebody's job uh, tapers off the amount of money that they receive uh, so they don't go a month without money. Uh, so in essence, um, uh, the, the scheme itself doesn't impact on anybody, uh, but the, uni the, the, the regular universal credit uh, uh, operation would come straight into effect here. Um, and it's entirely possible that people who are working 25 hours a week uh, be on a kickstart job uh, will never ever come off universal credit, or indeed will continue to uh, attract some of, the, some of the elements, such as housing, the, the housing element, um, uh, because their wage threshold doesn't meet any that doesn't meet anything that stops those things being paid. So the scheme doesn't impact at all, uh, but uni normal universal credit rules will apply. Okay, thank you. Um, another question: um, If the young person leaves before the six months, if something goes horribly wrong, mm -hmm. what happens to the fifteen hundred pound sort of grant given to the employer? Nothing. We're not. We're not acting. We're, we're not actively seeking to reclaim any of those, any of these grants, because, uh, like I said, we do kind of understand that uh, pe people will offer um, uh, offer jobs in goodwill, and sometimes these things don't work out. So, um, uh, so we're, we're not. Uh, we're not seeking to to to, uh, uh, to reclaim any of that. Okay. Uh, and an employer could then come back to us and say, Fred's only been with us three months, and he's gone for whatever reason. Um, can we have somebody else? And again, uh, we would effectively re-advertise that vacancy. So, uh, um, uh, so if you had to buy a new laptop for Fred and Fred's gone, you might want to use the laptop for uh, for Jemima when she turns up. Thank you. So they shouldn't send the fifteen hundred pounds to the gateway that got them that position, like our Chamber of Commerce. No, Shut that shame. <laughs> Regrettably, <laughs> Alan, not no, <laughs> but, it's, but it's a good try. <laughs> We're always good at that. Um, another question: um, Is is this scheme? I'm sure it is. Is it open to um, startup companies? Uh, we've had some questions. You know, a company less than three months old. Um, they haven't got any employees, so but obviously are thinking of of, of, of employing somebody. Um, no, is the answer. Oh, okay. uh, you will need to have been trading for at least one year 
um, you will need to have had in that time submitted any necessary financial filings or accounts or whatever and be completely up to date. So that's today's position. I'm going to muddy the waters a little now, I'm afraid. Um, uh, we understand, uh, as, as Sally said earlier on, I, I work at the, the group office of uh, DWP's London and Essex region. Um, and we understand ac across the capital, we have a very vibrant new business sector uh, in some of the uh, uh, industrial sectors, in, um, in tech, in creative, in fashion, and we understand that there are lots and lots of businesses um, that are relatively new businesses that, and, and under the definition I've just given you, would not um, uh, currently uh, be eligible for a kickstart uh, um, um, candidate. Um, we have gone back to our, policy, our colleagues in policy and said, do you realise you could be hand tying some of our growth sectors? Um, and they are reviewing that. But I have to give you the position as of today. As of today, you will need to have been trading for at least a year uh, and have every uh, required financial submission up to date. So do you have to be a limited company? You can't be a sole trader? Uh, if you're a sole trader without a company registration, you are not going to qualify for the scheme. But you can have a UTR number and show your tax returns? Uh, no, uh, you'd, need to, well, so you'd need to be registered at Companies House. Okay, um, as a sole trader you'd be registered with HMRC and have a UTR number and they'd be able to look at your no. uh, tax returns over the last six months, 12 months, five, ten years. No, the, the, the check is done at Companies House, so you need to have a Companies House registration number. Right. Um, okay. Again, we, we've raised this as an issue. I would have to say, however, if you are genuinely a sole trader, um, uh, we would have questions around how you're going to, to provide that wraparound to support, support um, uh, if there's just one of you and you're fully engaged in your business as it is. So, so the, the, there are issues around that. But no, the, check is, the, the initial check is done at Companies House. So if you're not registered at Companies House, you will not qualify for the scheme. I also, I suppose there's issues with um, making payments under PAYE if you're a sole trader as well. Uh, well, most, well, again, most most sole traders simply don't. I, I actually, I've come across one or two who do, um, oh, okay. for, 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 and and these are historic for historic reasons where they've been a bigger business and they've uh, and, and and they've changed their business format. Um, uh, but but for the vast majority of sole traders, they they clearly don't because they're only either paying themselves or they're working on some way through directors' dividends or however they do it. Um, but, uh, uh, but they're not on the PAYE scheme and you have to be paying, uh, you have to be registered for PAYE and be paying employees through PAYE for this to work. Otherwise the funding, the funding channel just doesn't work. Yeah, super, thank you. But thank you. Um, I'm looking at the Q and A. Um, a question here, can we use Hounslow Chamber as a gateway to hire in batches of 15 employees at a time? Well, I think the answer is yes. Absolutely, um, yes. I'm sure you'd just, be just, delighted with that, Sally, wouldn't yeah, you? Yeah, just get in touch. <laughs> um, right, now this is one of the young men who actually, um, who, who came to me directly regarding a job. Um, it, it's his mother who's emailed. Uh, my son asked his job centre helper to get in touch with Sally, who has his name on a list, but it, it was just an internal list. But last time he went back to the job centre, she said she was unable to contact me, um, you know, Sally Smith. Um, the, the, this boy's mother finds that extraordinary anyway around this um, because she, I think maybe Anne's getting a little bit confused. I mean, but, but her son has to, he has to, the, the, his job work officer has to actually put him in touch with the jobs from from the from the portal the the, 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 the correct way to do this is uh, as i said um once you once you once you start to get your bids approved you're asked to provide all this detail we use that detail and it cascades cascades down to the job center um uh so the the the, the thing to do for the for, for for any claimant in this position is to do i would i would advise to do two things Firstly, make sure your work coach fully understands the kind of work you're looking for and that how motivated you are and, and the kind of skills and any experience that you could offer to any potential employer. Because what that will do is it'll stick a prompt in the mind of the work coach to think, because new jobs come onto the system every day. 
and frankly, jobs disappear off the system every day because we, we're, 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 we're putting candidates into them and jobs are being filled. So every day, my colleagues, these, these people called work coaches, will look at the system and say, well, okay, what jobs have we got available today? And how can I match those jobs to the claimants I'm working with? So the more the work coach understands about a particular claimant's skills, motivations, enthusiasms, experience, all that kind of stuff, will put a, a stronger memory point for that particular work coach as a new job appears. It's then the work coach's responsibility to go, ah, well, okay, I know Fred's told me he does this and this and this, and he's interested in this and this and this. Um, uh, this job looks perfect for Fred. I'm going to give Fred a call. Um, uh, and that's the way that it works. Remember, a work coach can only deal with the candidate. They cannot deal with anybody outside of it, however well-intentioned a parent may be. Okay, thank, thank you. I, I will go back to Anne separately after this meeting. Um, right, here's a question. Can roles be ring-fenced to young people in Hounslow? Um, as a recruiting employer, can we specify this? Specify no. this? no is the short answer. Yes. <laughs> uh, um, Remember I mentioned that we're trying to make this, once the job effectively become advertised, we're trying to make this as, as, um, uh, as free, fair and transparent as we can and as similar to a normal job application process as we can. Um, so no. That said, if you're a hands on employer and you're putting a TW3 postcode on your, uh, uh, as the location of your job, the first place that job's going to appear is in Hanslow Job Centre uh, and that's going to, and they're only talking to, uh, to, to people in Hanslow Borough, Wooten borders uh, aside, um, but, uh, uh, but, uh, but uh, so um, can it be ring fence? No, but the first place it's going to appear uh, is is in the locality that you've uh, you've identified. Okay, thank you. Um, right, somebody has asked. Um, we have a number of, a number of placements, and would you advise some kind of consistency checking the the job descriptions? I'm not really sure what she's meaning by the question. Um, um, no, I'm not totally sure. I, th I think clearly a job description has got to be clear. Uh, yeah. It has to be relevant to the job role um, uh, that uh, that's on offer. Um, uh, and I think uh, it needs to um, uh, give the candidate uh, or the applicant a, a good understanding of, of what it is they're applying for. Um, and, and just coming back to my previous answer about how a work coach will, will identify who's the, right, who's the right candidate to sift into, the, into that particular job, the, the clearer the job description is, then clearly um, uh, the better that, uh, that initial uh, matching is going to be. Um, but I, I'm, I'm not entirely sure about that. So if, if, if Sally, if you get some clarification on that, yeah. uh, even if it's after the meeting, um, just let me know and I'll, I'll, happily, uh, I'll happily respond yeah. to that. Okay, another question about the limited company business. Um, he, uh, the company's been registered limited company for over a year, but doesn't have staff on payroll as they are located, located internationally um, uh, or do not take a wage as yet as it's the nature, you know, it's a family run business. Are they still eligible for the scheme? Um, it's got to be PIOE. Yeah, okay. Um, right. I think it, yeah, there's so many questions about the, the sole trader the sole trader issue. Um, and also there was a question that somebody came back to me. Um, how do you <coughs> fill in the application form to sort of, I mean, how do you prove that your job is a new job or it's a meaningful post? Are there any tips there? Um, okay. Uh, in, in essence, frankly, you're making a, de a declaration that it's a new job. Um, uh, but um, uh, again, please remember that uh, that part of the uh, part, part of the back office stuff of this is HMRC. HMRC will know if you've uh, if, if 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 you've got if you've got rid of ten people in the last month and all of a sudden you're asking for ten people. They'll under they'll know that. So it's best to be open and honest about this. Um, I think uh, uh, again uh, we will uh, we, we have the ability to to go and check where where jobs have been advertised by companies previously. Um, uh, particularly if they're on the uh, on the public available job boards, um, so so the, 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 I think we're asking people to, to 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 be open and honest with us because we're trying to be open and honest with with everybody else. So uh, so in essence, we're asking you to declare that. Um, uh, if you've uh, 
uh, if you, if, 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 if I can think of a major infrastructure project uh, that's going on um, uh, uh, in the capital at the moment that has identified that they're, that they're going to create 30,000 jobs. Um, uh, well, that's very, very good. But if they come to us for kickstart, uh, uh, they're going to get turned down because they haven't filled 30,000 jobs yet. Um, so it, it is, uh, uh, it, it, we're asking people to be open and honest with us. Uh, and, but again, like I said, we, we do have the facility to go back through HMRC to check how many people have been employed in a particular business at any time. So there is a, the, the, there is the ability to go and do some, uh, some due diligence uh, on that from our part, uh, if absolutely necessary. But in, in essence, um, uh, if people are honest with us, then, then that's absolutely fine. Okay. Um so many questions. Yes. Yeah, so basically, the, the, the answer is that for, for all these questions, you have to have P-A-Y-E to, to, to actually pay the young person. Um, sort of end of, really. Um, yes, I'm afraid the, so. Uh, what, what, uh, the, for the DWP, what criteria is being used to assess the applications? At the moment, I mean, it is it's just sort of company registered address and, and company number initially. Well, well, yes, uh, broadly speaking, um, but there is an element of financial check into that um, uh, as well, um, because I, uh, with, with um, uh, despite anybody's best intentions, what we're not looking to do is to find that that £1,500 we pay to people just disappears into to pay debt. Yeah. Um, uh, and so uh, we're, we'll be, we, we would be looking at some of those, an element of the, of, of of top level financial checking involved in all of that. Uh, there's, a, there's an element of checking that, uh, that companies are structured correctly. So are, they, are their addresses right? Are there, uh, do they have a list of board of directors? Um, back to the PAYE issue again, are they registered for PAYE? So those are the, uh, for companies applying for a gateway, they are, in, they are the, the, the principal checking that's going on. So do they exist? Are the details we've got correct? Um, um, uh, are they paying through PR? Do they look to be constructed correctly? Uh, are they a financial risk that the 1500 quid's just effectively being used to, uh, to, to offset an overdraft or pay or, or, or mop up some debt? Those are in essence the five key checks that are being done. Um, I've now got some clarification on our um, the question uh, regarding the, 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 the parity of, of the job applications. This is for yes. a, a university that is, is thinking of offering 15 placements. Mm -hmm. um, and basically, they, she wants to check whether the roles offered to the various individuals are at, should be at similar levels because they might feel disadvantaged or taken advantage of because what they want to do is they want to create a network group for the 15 young people starting at induction time. So they'll be speaking to each other. So it's the classic thing, you know, you never talk about how much money you earn around the water cooler, because that's when all the problems start. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> yes, I suppose is the short answer. I guess the longer answer is, uh, and it comes back to our, uh, to, our, to our inquiry about social media managers, I suppose. Uh, if those 15 jobs uh, are at a consistent level, I think that's a fantastic idea. And actually, I think, um, uh, creating that, that that sort of network and and uh, an interdependent support group is a fantastic thing to put in the in, in your plans for the wraparound support package because I think that's a that's a really good thing to do. But equally, if one of those fifteen jobs you're saying, well, you know what, for that particular job, we're willing to pay an additional amount of money over over and above the way support thing, or we're going to make that particular job thirty five hours a week, then clearly that job isn't equal. So, uh, I, but, I, but I think, uh, given in the terms of the question that was asked, uh, I think yeah, make them broadly, uh, make, make them broadly uh, um, yeah. uh, level in terms of uh, uh, job requirement. Uh, and, uh, sorry, job content. Uh, even if uh, for some of the jobs there may be a different skill set uh, involved. But I, I, I absolutely love the idea of, uh, uh, of of creating a, 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 yeah. a wider support group amongst the uh, yeah. amongst those candidates. Fantastic. Um, right, uh, we're almost coming to the end. So, Alan, are you were you able to have a look through the Q and A's? If I've missed any, but there is one, I will just carry on going through them as quickly as I can. Um, right, um, 
if a company has five existing employees, will I be able to take on 30 candidates through the Kickstart scheme? Uh, unlikely, um, uh, I think, because the question we would be asking is how on earth are you going to support, um, uh, are, you, are you telling us that each one of your existing employees has enough time in their current day job to support six, six new ones um, in from the wraparound support thing? So I think it's unlikely. Here's my advice on, uh, or a, a, a kind of tip on in, in, in that respect. Um, remember, non, these jobs don't, when you're making your bid, you don't need to have the job start immediately. So you could, def, you could say, you know what, I'm looking for 30 placements, but maybe we'll have five start in, uh, in January and we'll have another five start in, in July and we'll have another five start in December, whatever it might be. So, uh, so long as you tell us up front, when those jobs are going to start, um, uh, that that might you might find that's a way uh, of, of getting around uh, somebody looking at this and going, blimey, hang on a minute, this is a multiplication factor of, uh, of, of five or six. There's no way they'll be able to deliver that um, uh, because that, that, that there has to be a reasonableness in terms of uh, in terms of approach and in particular providing this wraparound support um, uh, to. Uh, uh, for, for, for something to be uh, to get through the approval process. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, a quick question from Jay Shah. Um, Nigel, can I double check if the business hasn't been trading for 12 months, then it doesn't qualify? Right now, that would be the case. That may not always be the case, but as I'm sat here today, that's correct. Thank you. Alan, have you seen any questions that we haven't <clears throat> answered? Um, the only other question from my side I've got, I guess, is um, what are the major issues that people need to overcome when they get registered as a gateway? Once we filled in the information, we got registered quite quickly on the gateway on the Kickstart site as a registered gateway. Um, I hear that other people have tried and haven't. Is there a simplification? Is there a process that you go through to check companies? Well, 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 yes, in essence, they use a thing called the Spotlight tool, which is a cabinet office tool, uh, which frankly is a financial, is, is a fiscal competency tool, uh, is what right. it is. Um, uh, um, so the, 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 the scenario I like, I, like to, uh, I like to give to this is, uh, uh, Sally was talking earlier on about the number of placements you're already putting into the scheme. Well, they, if, 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 from, from the Treasury's point of view, uh, it could be that on day one, we give you 30 lots of 1,500 quid. Uh, and what they're determined to assure is that 1,500 pounds goes to the employer uh, and doesn't, uh, doesn't pay for, uh, for somebody's uh, beach house in Barbados. So um, uh, that's, that's it in the most simplistic terms that I, sure, can, sure, sure. That, that I can give it in. So they use this tool called the Cabinet Office Spotlight tool. Um, it is the standard tool that's used to assess anybody bidding for, for effectively for government money. Uh, and uh, I'm not, I'm absolutely not telling you that anybody who hasn't been approved uh, has failed that tool, but uh, that will be, that will as a gateway be the number one uh, um, check that you already have gone through. And that's how you're already listed on the gateway listing. In terms of the challenges for gateways, you are gonna be handling all the money. So you need to have a, a process in place because the expectation is that £1,500 gets passed on immediately from us to you, to the employer. Um, and, then, and then six weeks in and then monthly thereafter, we will give you, obviously with all the relevant reference numbers and things, the, the, the wages for the, for, for, the, for the now employees. They're not candidates anymore. And again, the expectation is that you will pass that money on immediately. So you, that I think is probably likely to be your biggest challenge. Yeah, understand. Okay, superb. Thank you. Um, and somebody's asked about the fifteen hundred pounds that is paid in lump sum. One lump sum. Yeah, that's yeah, as we understood. Um, Samia has come back about the universal credit taper. Yeah. Um, she is our single mother. Um, with with you know on 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 sort of rent and 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 credit or universal credit. Um, the feedback she's receiving from prospective employees is that if 69 pence in the pound is being taken away and travel fees are paid to get to work, where is the upside in getting involved in this scheme? 
Um, Sally, I can't, uh, you'll understand that I can't do yeah. the individual cases. I'm, I was, Here, yeah. here's, here's my recommendation, however, is that somebody goes and talks to her work coach. If she talks to yeah. her work coach, uh, because there are other things that we can do, particularly in the first month of employment, uh, yeah. around things like uh, assisting with fares, that kind of stuff. Um, so, uh, that, that, yes, I'll, I'll, that I think is the, is, is the, is the advice. That, that, that's an answer. Yeah, that, that's a question for her work coach. Um, a few questions and then we'll, we'll sort of end it. But just, just to give an update on the training side of things, um, you know, uh, some companies um, mm -hmm. and obviously the universities um, are, are up to doing their training themselves, I'm sure. But if other companies are not that confident, yes, Hounslow Chamber will be offering a, a, a training scheme. Um, as yet to be sorted, um, but we will have more information on that shortly. Um, we are now at 11 o'clock, so I'm thinking that we'll can draw I, can, can I, I did see one question pop Oh, up. go for it, Nigel, yes, uh, please. Which I, I really ought to answer. Somebody asked a question about whether or not uh, uh, those um, claimants who are currently on Job Seekers Alliance can access this scheme. Um, uh, the, and the answer is no right now. Uh, and, and, and that's because there is no, uh, we have no back office scheme between JSA and, uh, 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 and uh, PAYE to, to check all the background financials. What I can say is, is that we've raised this again as an issue with policy colleagues. Um, uh, uh, and I know they're having a look at uh, if there's a way that we can work, we can work, we put a work around in that. But again, as we're sat here today, the answer is uh, regrettably those on JSA uh, are not eligible for the scheme. Thank you very much. If we haven't covered um, anybody's question, please do contact me directly and we will sort it out for you. But I do just want to thank you all and especially you, Nigel, for giving up your time this morning. I think that's been really useful by the, the number of questions. It's a very hot topic. Um, and we will keep everybody posted um, as to how House Load Chamber gets on with our applications. Okay. Well, again, Sally, thank you for the invite. And uh, if you ever want to do one of these again, more than happy to, uh, to join you. Brilliant. Now that would be great. Thanks, Nigel. It's going to go on for a long time. So I think we'll take you up on your offer. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you again. Thank, thank you so much, everybody. Pleasure. Thank you. Goodbye and keep Good safe. Bye-bye, everybody. Okay. Bye -bye, everybody.